Hello folks, Moroli Edutech brings you an exciting and interesting series of videos titled, History of Landmarks. In this episode, we shall go through the history of the iconic landmark of France, the Eiffel Tower. Regarded as one of the seven wonders of the world and listed as a World Heritage Site, the Eiffel Tower is not just an engineering marvel, but the pride of Parisians as well. The tower is 330 meters tall, about the same height as an 81-story building and the tallest structure in Paris. Its base is square, measuring 125 meters on each side. It was designated Monument Historique in 1964 and was named part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1991. Almost all believe that the Eiffel Tower was designed by Gustave Eiffel, but the real truth is that Gustave was the owner of the company which built this beautiful landmark, while the tower was designed by two structural engineers Maurice Cochlin and Emile Nugia and architect Charles Leon Stephen Sauvister working with company des Etablissements Eiffel owned by Alexandre Gustave Eiffel. Today, Eiffel Tower is the most visited monument, with an entrance fee in the world with 5,889,000 visitors in 2022. Till date more than 300 million people have visited this engineering marvel. Now back to history, during the 1889 Exposition Universal, a world fair scheduled to be held at Paris, the organizers decided to come up with something special for the fair. It was envisioned after discussion about a suitable centerpiece to celebrate the centennial of the French Revolution. In May 1884, Cochlin and Nugia made a sketch of their idea, consisting of four lattice girders standing apart at the base and coming together at the top, joined by metal trusses at regular intervals. Initially Eiffel showed little interest, but approved further study, and the two engineers with the help of Stephen Sauvester, the head of the company's architectural department, added decorative arches to the base of the tower, a glass pavilion to the first level, along with other embellishments. The revised version gained Eiffel's support. He bought the rights to the design patent from Cochlin, Nugia, and Sauvester, and the design was displayed at the Exhibition of Decorative Arts in 1884. Eiffel presented his plans to the Société des Ingenieurs Civils. When Jules Grevy was re-elected as President of France in 1886, budget for the exposition was passed. A commission was set up to examine the design submitted, which concluded that all the proposals except Eiffel's were impractical. Contract was signed with Eiffel, granting him 1.5 million francs towards the construction costs of the estimated 6.5 million francs. As per the agreement, Eiffel was to receive all income from the commercial exploitation of the tower during the exhibition and for the next 20 years. French Bank, the credit industrial at commercial provided the finance for the construction of the Eiffel Tower. No structure had ever been constructed to a height of 300 meters, or even 200 meters, and for that matter, many people believed it was impossible. These objections were an expression of a long-standing debate in France about the relationship between architecture and engineering. It came to a head as work began at the Champ de Mars. A committee of 300, one member for each meter of the tower's height, was formed, led by the prominent architect Charles Garnier and some of the most important figures of the arts, such as William Adolphe Bouguereau, Guy de Maupassant, Charles Gounod and Jules Massenet to study about the structure due to the pressure from various people who are against the construction. Gustave Eiffel responded to these criticisms by comparing his tower to the Egyptian pyramids. My tower will be the tallest edifice ever erected by man. Will it not also be grandiose in its way? And why would something admirable in Egypt become hideous and ridiculous in Paris? Work on the foundations started in January 1887. Architects and engineers produced 1,700 general drawings and 3,629 detailed drawings of the 18,038 different parts required. Drawing the components was complicated, 
because of the complex angles involved in the design and the degree of precision required. The components are made in a factory located in the Parisian suburb of Levalloipie. A total of 18,038 pieces were joined using 2.5 million rivets. The puddle iron of the Eiffel Tower weighs 7,300 tons. When the lifts, shops and antennae are added it brings up the total weight to around 10,100 tons. Additionally, a cubic box surrounding the tower containing 6,200 tons of air weighs almost as much as the iron itself. Depending on the ambient temperature, the top of the tower shift away from the sun by up to 18 centimeters due to thermal expansion of the metal on the side facing the sun. The Eiffel Tower sways by up to 9 centimeters in the wind. The tower was open to the public nine days after the opening of the exposition, even though the work of elevators were not being completed. The tower was an instant success among the public, with nearly 30,000 visitors made the 1,710 step climb to the top before the lifts entered service. Tickets cost 2 francs for the first level, 3 francs for the second, and 5 francs for the top, with half price on Sundays, and by the end of the exhibition, a total of 1,896,987 people visited the Eiffel Tower. The French company Rue, Combalusia Le Pape installed the lifts in the east and west legs. Installing lifts to the second level was more of a challenge due to the design of the tower, which refrained French companies to undertake the work and eventually the contract was given to Otis. Gustave Eiffel engraved the names of 72 French scientists, engineers and mathematicians in recognition of their contributions to the construction on the tower. Eiffel were given 20 years permit for the tower to stand for and was supposed to be dismantled in 1909, when its ownership would revert to the city of Paris. The city had planned to tear it down, but as the tower proved to be valuable for many innovations in the early 20th century, particularly radio telegraphy, it was allowed to remain after the expiry of the permit, and from 1910 it also became part of the International Time Service. In 1910, Father Theodore Wolff measured radiant energy at the top and bottom of the tower, incidentally discovering what are known today as cosmic rays. By 1918, it had become a symbol of Paris and of France, after Guillaume Apollinaire wrote a nationalist poem in the shape of the tower to express his feelings about the war against Germany. Today, it is widely considered to be a remarkable piece of structural art and is often featured in films and literature. Maintenance of the tower includes applying 60 tons of paint every seven years to prevent it from rusting. The tower has been completely repainted at least 19 times since it was built. Lead paint was still being used as recently as 2001 when the practice was stopped out of concern for the environment. This remarkable engineering marvel is still considered as the iconic symbol of Paris and of France. Thanks for viewing this presentation. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. We request you to share and subscribe to our channel.